Well, a rare total solar eclipse is expected to be visible across the US, with hopeful spectators busily preparing for the event. While many are keeping their eyes peeled across the world, viewers in North America are expected to have a front row seat. A cosmic curtain rising above Earth. Millions are making preparations to view the total solar eclipse tonight, putting spectators in the US in a lunar frenzy. So we're going to be flying to Dallas just for one day and then going back home just to be there for the few hours to experience it. I'm addicted to that feeling of that being that for those few seconds or minutes, being one with the universe and being really present and feeling it. And then, of course, there's always the planning for the next one. My life is measured in eclipses. Total eclipses happen when the moon passes directly in front of the sun, casting a shadow on Earth and creating a path of totality. The last solar eclipse that crisscrossed through the US was in 2017, with totality lasting 2 minutes and 45 seconds. According to NASA, this year's phenomenon will have a longer duration in totality, meaning the sun will appear to be blacked out for an estimated 4 minutes and 28 seconds. People in North America have the prime viewing spots for tonight's eclipse, as it passes over parts of Mexico, the US and Canada. There's a path of totality though that starts in Texas and it goes um, up north and comes out through Maine. And the people in the path of totality will get to see the uh, main body of the sun totally blocked out. Authorities in Canada are more hesitant than excited, declaring a state of emergency as they prepare for more than one million people to flock to Niagara Falls, which is in the eclipse's path of totality whether it be congestion of traffic, um, cellular network disruptions, um, and, and of course our emergency medical services. We want everybody to be um, on high alert. In the south of Dallas, an excited hum has descended on the town, particularly for small town businesses. The oily bar Soapery is hosting a bubble blackout all weekend with Eclipse-themed soaps and giveaways. They even told us to maybe be prepared to sleep in our store if we needed to. Um, so on Monday, just I'm thinking just because of traffic. With the next total solar eclipse scheduled for 2028, viewers are keen to sneak a peek at this rare celestial event. Ryan Milligan is a solar physicist at Queen's University in Belfast, Northern Ireland, and an eclipse chaser, and he joins me now live from Mexico. Uh, good morning to you. Thank you so much for your time. No problem, Kath. Nice to meet you. Now, Ryan, as we heard in that story there, this eclipse is sweeping across the Pacific Ocean uh, through Mexico, the US, Canada. You've gone to Mexico. Why so? All about the weather for me, Kath. I think... Um the forecasts, um, the long-range forecasts have been people have been pouring over for months and if not years have, have picked Mex uh, Mexico as the prime location. Again, no guarantees as anything in astronomy, weather can, uh, clouds can roll in at the last minute and spoil the view, but I'm trying to give myself the best opportunity that I can to experience this uh, unique event. So I've come to Mazatlan on the Pacific coast for, for tomorrow's big day. So tell me about tomorrow's big day. I know you've chased numerous eclipses. What is it, 11 or 12? You're in Western right. Australia just last year for one that we had here yes. in Australia. Why is this one so special? I, to me, they're all special, but as, as they said in your, in your piece there, this one is unique in the sense that it goes over such a populated landmass, uh, including the Mexico, most of the US and, and Canada. So it goes over many major cities, giving a lot of people an opportunity to witness this. And if you remember back to last year, the, the path of totality just clipped uh, the northwest cape of North Australia. So it was a very, very limited um, place on the earth where you could view last year's eclipse. So by, this is a huge difference by comparison than over such a, a populated landmass. Mm. Tell me a little bit about what it is that you love about it so much. You've made it your life's work. And I noticed in, I think it was a New York Times piece that you wrote, you said you don't just see a total solar eclipse, but you feel it. Can you explain right. that? Uh, I can try. <laughs> it's something I've struggled to articulate in, in many interviews in the past. It's, um, it's a very primal, uh, visceral kind of feeling to see 
the the sun disappear basically during in the middle of the day it's it's not something new your brain is accustomed to processing and i think it, that's it's that thrill it's that kind of adrenaline rush that uh causes eclipse chasers like myself to travel the world to have this very very fleeting experience when the the temperature drops the few, perhaps a few stars come out in the middle of the day the animals go to sleep the shadows are all misplaced and you're looking around you trying to sort of comprehend and soak in this experience that only lasts for a couple of minutes and and it's a it's a it's a kind of an addictive feeling and you and it's over before you know it just as you're starting to make sense of it it's gone and you're like i need to, i need to experience that again to try and process it and make it make sense to me mm. and so then you're, you're you immediately begin planning your trips for the next one mm. so apart from the duration we know that this one is going to be longer than the one before it but apart from that are all eclipses the same not at all no they're they're very very different in their own right from a solar physics perspective, um, the, the part of the sun's atmosphere, the corona that you see during totality, once the moon completely obscures the disk of the sun, that can appear very different depending on what phase of the solar cycle we're in. So the sun goes through a natural activity cycle every 11 years or so, and it rises and falls with the levels of activity. And so that can dictate how the corona is structured and whether you see prominences off the, the limb of the sun, these clouds of hydrogen gas and so on. Um, the duration, you know, whether it's a sunrise eclipse, a sunset eclipse, a midday eclipse can have some dramatic effects. Uh, and, and just where you are as well and who you're with uh, can really uh, change the experience of, of totality each, each, each time. Are you there with a bunch of fellow physicists to experience this one? I'm on my own. I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm flying solo. So a lot of my, uh, my colleagues are in, um, and friends have all gone to Texas because I think they thought that was a little bit more accessible and easier to get to. And it, was, it had been sort of tipped as the place in, in the continental US of, of the best place to view it. And looking at the forecast for Texas, maybe not great. I think there's maybe some thunderstorms tomorrow. Mm. So I, I went rogue. I've gone rogue and just come here. I've always wanted to come to Mexico. There you Texas go. Texas is also an amazing chance to travel and to see the world. But I've, I've First and foremost, I want to give myself the best opportunity to see it tomorrow. Two birds with one stone there. I hope you have the last <laughs> laugh. Uh, Dr. Ryan Milligan, all the very best. Thank you. Thanks, Kat. Take it easy. Now, sadly, Eclipse Chasers in Australia won't be able to see the sky darken. However, NASA will live stream the event. For those outside the US, just head to the NASA website. The live stream will begin at 1pm North American Eastern Daylight Time, so it's 3am Eastern Standard Time tomorrow morning for Aussie viewers, and it will last three hours.